Let us now consider the microscopic features of prostate gland. I am grateful to Dr. Michael Hosh of University of Michigan Medical School for providing the images of histology sections. Prostate is a walnut shaped fibromuscular accessory sex gland. It's located in the lesser pelvis below the neck of urinary bladder. It's covered by a prostatic capsule and there is a layer of endopelvic fascia outside it. Between these two layers, we find the venous plexus of prostate. This gland is traversed by prostatic urethra and a pair of ejaculatory ducts. Prostate is made up of 30 to 50 tubuloalveolar glands, all of which open into prostatic urethra. Between this glandular tissue, we find fibromuscular stroma. Lining epithelium of these glands varies from simple cuboidal to simple columnar to pseudostratified columnar type. Secretory activity of these epithelial cells is influenced by testosterone and other androgens secreted from the suprarenal glands. And these cells secrete a clear fluid which is rich in prostatic acid phosphatase, prostate specific, specific antigen, fibrinolysin, citric acid, amylase and zinc. Both prostatic acid phosphatase and prostate specific antigen act as tumor biomarkers. Alveoli in older men contain concentric lamellated bodies called as corpora amylacea or prostatic concretions. These are actually deposits of prostatic secretions around the cell fragments. Based on their location and termination, prostatic glands are described to be arranged in three concentric layers. The innermost circle of mucosal glands open directly into the urethra. Middle layer of submucosal glands and the outer layer of peripheral glands, they open into urethra through their ducts. These submucosal glands and peripheral glands open into prostatic sinuses on either side of urethral crest. Here we are seeing a section of prostatic urethra showing the urethral crest in the posterior midline and prostatic sinuses on either side of it. We are seeing the inner mucosal glands opening directly into the urethra whereas the ducts of submucosal and peripheral glands are seen to be opening into prostatic sinuses. Prostatic urethra is lined by transitional epithelium above the level of openings of ejaculatory ducts and it is lined by pseudostratified columnar epithelium below the level of openings of ejaculatory ducts. Here we are seeing the ducts of submucosal and peripheral glands which are lined by stratified columnar epithelium. There is a basal layer of cuboidal cells and luminal layer of columnar cells. Based on the development and pathology, adult prostatic parenchyma is described to be divided into three zones. There is a transitional zone around the distal prostatic urethra and this makes up about 5% of the entire parenchyma. This zone is more prone for benign prostatic hyperplasia or what we call as BPH. And then there is a central zone surrounding the ejaculatory ducts which makes up about 25% of the parenchyma. It is present in the area shown here but occupies a much larger area around the ejaculatory ducts in the upper prostate. This area is resistant to both BPH as well as carcinoma. There is a third zone called as peripheral zone. This is a cup shaped zone flanking central and transitional zones from behind. And this makes up about 70% of the parenchyma. This zone is prone for prostatic carcinoma. Glands in the central zone develop from mesoderm of the mesonephric duct, whereas glands in the transitional and peripheral zone develop from endoderm of the urogenital sinus. There is fibromuscular stroma containing dense connective tissue and smooth muscle fibers which occupy the greater part of anterior part of prostate. So quickly recalling what we have seen so far, prostate is made of tubuloalveolar glands and fibromuscular stroma. It is traversed by prostatic urethra and a pair of ejaculatory ducts. Glandular epithelium varies from cuboidal to columnar to pseudostratified columnar type. 
Plants are arranged in three concentric layers as mucosal, submucosal and peripheral plants. Plants are also described to be divided into three zones based upon their development and pathological behavior as transitional zone, central zone and peripheral zone. Thank you. Hope you enjoyed this video. You can also visit this site for similar histology videos.